So this is Dave, and this is his awesome camper van. Dave, you want to walk me through then what you got here? Yeah, it's uh, it's an old fire rescue vehicle. Uh, 36, 37 years old. It spent its working career down in the southern part of Germany. Uh, 26 years it spent at one fire station. It attended mainly the motorway smashers, uh, motorway accidents and, and car crashes. So it wasn't a fire engine, it was a fire rescue vehicle. So it carried all the cutting, winching, all the specialist gear. So we imported the vehicle in 2015 and then we started the work in April uh, 2016. So I had a full seven month off work to, to take the fire engine back off there and then to, to build uh, the box section, which is our living quarters. So after the seven month, uh, I went back to work. I started earning money again and, and so on. So I got the vehicle to about 70% 70, 70 complete. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done and to this day I'm still working on the vehicle so th there's a lot of work to be done on, on there we are preparing to get off on a trip after hopefully after lockdown so I'm, I'm trying to rush these next couple of days <laughs> and just try to get one or two finishing points off well, it, it looks fantastic let's have a little pan around here look yeah how old is it? Uh, 37 I think about 37 years old so what we what we've got here on the door as well, uh, this is uh, the, the channel EB257. But what what we've got here is the wild boar running through the forest, which is the the shield for Herbersberg in Germany. Ah, that's where it's from. So that's where it's from. So the EB257 was the original registration plate, or maybe even coal sign. So the truck actually came with its own name. So we didn't name the truck, it, it, that's what it came with. So EB257 were the original call gotcha. sign. And it's based on, what's the 1222, which is a Mercedes? Yeah, it's a Mercedes 1222. So the 12 is the 12 ton, and the 22 is 220 brake horse. So underneath here, we've got a Mercedes six liter V6 engine. Uh, the, the, the vehicle, when, when we bought it, uh, came with 22,000 miles on there. So in, in the, the space of, you know, the 20, 26 year at the fire station, it had done less than 1,000 miles it's per year. Right. It's just running, right? It's just running, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's practically a new engine. And obviously, it spent most of its life in a garage. Uh, yeah. Maybe washed, you know, a couple of times a week, I don't know. But yeah, she, she's, she's a fine a girl. Yeah, she's a fine girl. Obviously left-hand drive come from yeah. here up there. Left-hand drive, we've uh, upgraded the seats because yeah. the seats were like the old, old-style leather seats. So we put these, I think these are out of a Mazda or something like that. Uh, it were a little bit of a bench seat at this side. Mm. Uh, but, but yes. What's she like to drive? She's actually all right, to be honest with you. She, she's, she's actually fine. Uh, I think, unlike the modern trucks where they've got the air suspension and the, the levelling on the seats and, and everything, if you do it any manholes, you do, because you are sat about you know, six foot up there, you do get a little bit of movement in the cab. So I do try to avoid the, the kerb, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the grates at the side of the road. But apart from that, she's fine. I think it's five speed. The first gear we very rarely use because uh, first is actually where second would be on a normal car so okay. the, the, the gear stick is a little bit back to front but first is, is very low ratioed uh, so we tend to set off in, in second, third, fourth and then fifth would be as last gear What's she getting to the gallon? Approximately about 10 miles to the gallon <laughs> which equates to uh, I've worked it out and basically I work it out to £25 an hour so if you're going to drive the vehicle for me to be and it's going to take you an hour it's yeah. 25 quid yeah basically uh on 100 pound in diesel i will say this has been tried and tested 100 pound in diesel will get you on a run uh 220 mile yeah so it's you and the wife this is for yes yeah you me and the missus yes so uh 
first trip is hopefully uh, next week and we, we plan on going up Scotland, all being well. Uh, we, we've, I mean, I've been living in the vehicle now for about four years. Uh, oh, full I'm, time? Yeah, full time. You're full time in yes. this? Yes. Wow, okay. I'm a, I'm a joiner, joiner shop fitter, so I was very rarely at home anyway. Uh, I used to return home maybe, you know, once a fortnight or something like that. So, uh, yeah, so I've been living it virtually full time. Can we have a look inside? Yes, yeah. certainly, Cheers. yes. Well, there she is. So, welcome to the interior. Yes. Wow. Looking fantastic. Now, we spoke last night, and I know you like Morocco. Yes, I love Morocco, yes. Uh, it's a fantastic place. Uh, if you haven't gone, uh, if you ever have never been to Morocco, definitely get it on the on the bucket list. I speak to a lot of uh, uh, motor owners, and they go as far as Spain, and they tend to stop at Spain and they think they're getting a good deal and it's like no pay the extra 130 euros get on the ferry and get across to to morocco it's definitely worth uh, seeing and it's safe it's probably just as safe as the it's UK. a place high on our list yeah to go as Def we spoke about going. last night yeah yes, yeah so this is this is a, a this obviously came as a fire engine you've ripped it out it completely yep. built it from scratch yep so all all, all all this is all completely new so the the, the fire engine back uh completely got taken off the truck and scrapped so we were left with just a bare truck and the and the chassis so underneath what we're where we're standing now we've got a independent chassis or semi-independent chassis so it's a h h section steel and the box is actually sat on that the and the reason for that is the truck needs to uh, articulate and the, the, the chassis will actually twist, or the truck chassis will. Obviously, the box sat on top cannot twist. So, basically, you've got two uh, different entities where, where the truck will actually do all this, but the box stays rigid right, on yeah, top. Yeah, I've seen them do that. Yes. Yeah. So, so, what we've got here now, we've, uh, we've got basically truck sides. So, the, the box were actually built completely from scratch. So, we've got the, the panels from... A company called Montrecon, what actually do the uh, the truck sides, uh, and, and basically I built a box, uh, <laughs> a box on wheels. You got access to the cab there, haven't you? Yeah, this is this is the latest addition. Uh, th this is a security feature. If if we we've got dogs at the minute, so the chances of us using this are very slim. But once the dogs go, or or I'm on my own, say for instance, and the, the whole idea of this is if I've got a key, yeah. <clears throat> if I wanted to get through on a night, if I can hear something happening outside, maybe someone's tampering with the bike on the back, I can just quite simply open this up, which reveals another door for the for the truck cab. I can open that. I can actually climb into the truck from there. Yeah, sure. I can go through the sunroof along, you know, and I'm, obviously I'm I'm up above the. Uh, whatever's happening outside i'm actually up above them then so it's more of a yeah uh, an advantage point than actually going outside or of course you can be driving away then and getting away from yeah yeah if yeah, need be yeah if, need, if we need to be off we, it's just a case of getting in there and starting up and moving off brilliant fantastic so like i said this is a, a, a one of the latest ad additions what we've uh, what we've actually done what a fantastic job we've done of that as well uh the, a lot of the timber we're using here as well is reclaimed uh, probably about 80% of it is actually all reclaimed which you know you do find in, in well some, some of the camper vans so, so even this wall here which is a feature wall uh, we've got some tile trim in here which is just left over from a job uh, the the laminate flooring that were, came out of a bag, bagging bucket in the, the local B&M <laughs> the, the, oh, the white little bits here, uh, a reused uh, mini trunking, you know, that were actually cut down. I think the only thing what I did buy were these panels here, which are the pine panels, and we stained those and sanded them, so... Fantastic. Uh, this, a lot of the kitchen units, these units here, 
and these are all uh, these are actually pallets so it's all lightweight construction but these are just you know uh, made from pallets Running. the resin worktop I, I did actually buy the timber for this uh, I did actually construct all the you know all the uh, the worktop itself and we've got MDF units uh, below same again it's all being constructed by myself but using every every little you know every little uh, drill what we can uh, and you know even the even the couple of, oh. <laughs> that was supposed to happen fantastic yeah you've made great use of the space yeah wow okay so uh <clears throat> So the the, the the ISO is obviously this wall. Uh, I can't wait to get this wall finished because I keep altering some of the systems and upgrading some of the systems. The dials on here keep keep changing. So that's ever evolving, is it? That's that's yeah. It's a constant battle with uh, design and flaws. And uh, anyway, let's not talk about that. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> so uh, we've got the bedroom at the back. We've got two uh, 400, uh, sorry, two 200 litre water tanks. So we're carrying uh, 400 litres of water back here. And we've got six auxiliary batteries, which equate to 630 amp at 12 volt. So there's quite a lot of batteries and water back here. On top of the batteries in the water tank is storage. So the bed lifts up on two hydraulic rams, and then we've got storage underneath there. Fantastic. I'll get you storage up top for your clothes. Yeah, storage all, all the way around and a bit of a, a blanket box at the back there. Right. This is the electric cupboard and then we've got the, the bathroom there. Well, that's quite spacious, though. And you've got a nice big fridge freezer. Yes. Uh, we wanted, we, we do a little bit of sea fishing. So, you know, if the mackerel's in or, or the, the sea bass are in, then it would be really nice to uh, to catch some fish. So in here, this is a 60 litre fridge freezer. Fantastic. Uh, freezer. And then obviously we've got the, the fridge freezer. The fridge um, part in the there. The fridge part, yeah, sorry, the fridge part. With plenty of beer, of course, plenty of Guinness. Plenty of beer. Good man. Guinness. And then some wardrobes. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah, M MDF wardrobes. So, uh, again, the, these go full full way back. Uh, I've tried to recirculate, recirculate the heat as well, which I'll show you on the, on the kitchen. So, the heat from the uh, fridge freezer, instead of going outside, it will actually pass out and come out here. So when the helmet's going here and the helmets are wet or whatever, oh. we've uh, we've got a little bit of a drying room for the helmets. Very clever. The the covers here, you can see the doors are actually slightly offset. They're offset for a reason because I mean, when I'm stood here and I want to open this door, obviously I've got the gotcha. the room to open. You so, put some thought into that, right? Yeah. So I mean, the doors are obviously offset for a for a purpose. And some drawers down below. Yeah, plenty of drawer space. Uh, you know, same again, cupboards, and even a cupboard underneath the the step right, here. On the step. Yeah. How do you do for heating? I see some uh, some vents there. Yeah, well, they, these are just to keep the 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 circulation of the air uh, to stop any hopefully any, any damp spots. Uh, with it being a large area and having water tanks underneath there, you've got you've got the warmth of the cab, or warmth of the pod. And then obviously you got, you got the coldness of the tanks. So the tanks are insulated, but nevertheless, we did have a, a couple of areas where we we're getting, I'm not going to say damp, but condensation forming. Yeah. So I've put in plenty of ventilation and we have got a, a little uh, electric heater underneath there, which I can fire up with a, it's only 200 watts, like a greenhouse heater. So I can run that off the inverter if need be. But what we tend to find out is when, when we are actually off grid, this place tends to be a lot cooler anyway. So rather than having the heating on, we'll put a jumper on, say for instance. So we don't we don't tend to get condensation when we're off grid. It's only when we've got the electric heating, like 240, that you have the heating on, you've got all the heaters on, the TVs on, everything's on. 
it's nice and warm in here it's cold outside and that's when you start getting the condensation forming have you thought of putting a diesel heater in there <sighs> you don't need it another sore point right i have got a diesel heater i am having problems with it at the moment uh it's a uh herbis patcher hydronic uh 4.5 kilowatt but what i'm finding out is i'm struggling maybe pumping the water around so i bought a secondary pump to hopefully get the water pumping around which should cure obviously the the, the problem of the herbis patcher if not it could be a log burner i don't know yet yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah I've, I've been having fun with the diesel eating now for far too long so if anyone's out there and you know you can help me on the diesel eat I've, I've, yeah that would be nice get in the comments yeah right, get in the comments yeah definitely by by all means wow what can i say thank you so much for yeah showing no, us around. no problem no problem the, your overlander you go to the overland show uh you. maybe and maybe uh I, I keep saying i'm going and every time i say i'm going I end up not going for some reason or another. So I'm going to say, no, I'm not going. And you know, who knows, you may see me we there. We may see you there. <laughs> Brilliant. Looking out for it. And you're on YouTube? I am on YouTube, yeah. Uh, our channel is called EB257, hence the truck, uh, the, the truck's name. So, yeah, I've, I've, I've put quite a lot of things on there. I'm, I'm trying to keep it regularly updated. And I'm quite sure that if you're doing something like this, you will find some parts in there. What's what's definitely interesting for you? Yeah, definitely. And are you on Insta? Yeah, we're on Insta as well. We are starting with TikTok, but I'm afraid I'm at, I'm at that age where some things don't always make sense. No, we're, we're starting on TikTok as well. Yeah, as goes, absolutely. right. We're going to crack cool. that as well. So fantastic. Well, thanks so much for taking the time no to problem. show us around. It's been what great. It's been great. Yeah. Fantastic. Anytime. Great time. So, uh, yeah, anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.